702. Masterclass. The Masterclass is uh, with me, Rilib Khile Mabucha, on 702. It's brought to you by ABSA Home Loans. T's and C's apply. ABSA is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider, NCRCP7. So, in our conversation for today with ABSA Home Loans, we're joined by Hualani Mabaz, so Managing Executive of Everyday Advice and Distribution at ABSA. We take your calls on 11 one 702 the WhatsApp line 72 and uh, we are talking about understanding the two-part pension fund system and its implications for homeowners. And we ask uh, all of you as well to stay tuned. You must listen. We're going to ask a question. One of you will be winning 5,000 rand courtesy of ABSA Home Loans. We're going to ask you a question that um, will be relating to what we are talking about. Hualani, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. Good afternoon to everybody. This is uh, quite a big topic of conversation, which is the two-part system. Uh, uh, Where are the pods? Is our question, Walani, <laughs> where are the pots? <laughs> Look, I think uh, everybody's wondering about the pots, but uh, yeah, it's an interesting conversation. A conversation in the dinner table, everybody's talking about the pots, the two pot system. Uh, so, yeah, and it's what an exciting f- conversation. And what I find so interesting, I saw um, uh, something that was recently posted. Um, I just want to pull it up, but. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Koshik Karan was posting to say SARS has already banked 6.7 million rand on the first day of the two-part system, 103 million rand in withdrawals across 2,400 plus claims that were processed. And I'm realizing from all of this that um, um, South Africans, we obviously are not in a great position financially, but maybe, and, and I stand to be corrected, Hualani, are you finding that many people do not understand the tax implications of these withdrawals? Because it all sounds good and well to say, oh, thank goodness I can access this fund. Look, it's very interesting. I think it's only two days in, and you are correct to say that uh, the taxman has actually backed quite a huge amount of money. But we've got to remember, first and foremost, why the two-part system was put into place. Uh, we understood that as a country, we do have South Africans who find it difficult or face financial hardships or difficulty before retirement. And as a result, what used to happen is that a lot of people would actually go and resign from their, you know, their employment to access their pension money or retirement money. And as a result, this actually led to lots and lots of South African retiring uncomfortably because they do not have enough. But I suppose going back to your question, it is quite clear that South Africans do not understand um, the tax implications and also the implications of what will happen in their future. So we've got to understand that whoever is withdrawing money at this point in time, you are actually going to share a certain portion of that with the taxman, uh, which will be at your marginal tax rate. And also there's an important factor to remember, which is the fact that the taxmen will also come after any amount of money that you might be owing them if you have not made um, necessary, um, you know, arrangements with them. So the biggest question that everybody out there who's got any intention of withdrawing, you should be asking yourself around the tax implication. And if you do not understand that, it's quite important that you speak uh, to a financial advisor to assist you. When we come back, we will definitely get into the details of what the two-pot system is all about and the implications that fall with it. Every first and last Wednesday of the month, 702 and APSA Home Loans will walk the home ownership journey with all of us as South Africans by providing expert guidance and practical tools, empowering you to make informed decisions and reducing anxiety associated with significant financial commitments such as home ownership. So we are in conversation with Hualani Mabaso, who's managing executive of everyday advice and distribution at absa and uh, she will continue to explain more around the two-pot pension fund system for you as a home loaner home owner when we come back 18 minutes after two o'clock in our master class for today we're talking the two-pot system here yeah? what is that thing that they said they say a uh, uh, to make the pods to be done I don't make the things to have the pods to be done. 
That's the two-part system we are talking about today with Absa Home Loans and our guest is Managing Executive of Everyday Advice and Distribution at Absa, Hualani Maba. So, Hualani, um, let's start with the simple question. If we are to put it in summary, what does the two-part system entail? What does it mean? Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's a good question because we might just assume everybody understands, but this is basically a new rule that has been introduced to all the new, uh, on all the retirement funds, which became effective the 1st of September uh, 2024. So everybody was actually waiting for the 1st of September, not for spring, but for two pots. And, and basically what uh, it does is that this is a reform that will allow retirement fund members to actually make partial withdrawal from the retirement funds. Uh, only when they face uh, financial hardship and, and they can access this before before retirement. And what it does is that it's now going to give you um, two pots, which is basically one, which is the old component, what we now call the vested pot. And then there is now the component, which is actually the savings pot. And some people will then say, OK, it's not necessarily a, a two pots, but it's more of a three pot because you now also have the retirement pot. So in simple terms, vested pot which is old money anything that you contributed up until the 31st of august 2024 and then from the first you will now have a savings pot as well as a retirement pot and within the savings pot you will have um, access to 10 percent and then the retirement pot will be the two-third that will now go into that pot you mentioned financial hardship um, how, how do you prove that to to be able to access because it's not like a person can just say we're thinking I want to start a business there's this money I know I want to access it but you're still comfortable in your job earning a salary look I think um, it's very difficult to you know say what hardship would be because we can all define it in different ways but what we are saying is that when you've got financial difficulty that is extremely difficult, I'll maybe just give an example where you are in the likelihood of losing perhaps your home if there are challenges there, that might be maybe a yes. financial hardship. So this is where you now can say, I'm gonna dip, dig into the savings pot because I'm experiencing some difficulty. But it shouldn't be financial difficulty because I saw uh, so and so on a holiday and as a result now i want to be <laughs> you know i want to go to to mauritius and experience the i thought life. me needing to go to mauritius and not having the money is financial no no, no 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 so financial <laughs> difficulty should really mean that it's a matter of a difficulty that you really need to mm. solution for and it's not going to be money that you're going to go and spend buy a new tv uh, you know buy a new phone but something that mm. will actually be significant for yourself and your family. Uh, so we do know that we're not necessarily going to say, uh, you know, your financial difficulty is the same as mine. So people can mm. experience it differently. But I think the question to all our listeners is to really sit down and think and say, is this really financial difficulty? Or mm. am I suffering from some form of FOMO, you know, uh, because mm. I want to do X, Y, Z. So it should really be along the lines of that hardship that you're facing. So let's, um, um, if we are to use a million rand as a round figure, um, and this is coming through from uh, on the WhatsApp line. So as an example, just so we can quantify this, the, the two pots, let's say the person's pension fund is sitting at a million rand, um, which which sits in which pot, and you can create the hypothetical scenario of round figures, just so we understand that what that ten percent amount would be. Yeah, no, I think there's a bit of confusion there. So, with a million rand, yes, we can say you will need to put ten percent of that amount of money into your savings, and then the rest will then go into, um, you know, what we call that versed pot or remain in that versed pot, but. The reality is that we know that this is now kept at about 30,000. So irrespective of how much money you might have um, in your current vested pot, you cannot mm. actually have more than 30,000 sitting in the savings pot. So it is kept. Yes, there is a 10%. It says they will move the lesser of 10% or 30,000. So it's either the lesser of 10% or 30,000 from your retirement savings into your savings pot. So at this point in time, if you're sitting, uh, you should be having 30,000 or less. Um, there are circumstances so maybe just- So just to clarify, to, so yes. 30,000 is all you can access a year? 
30,000 is actually what can sit in your savings. There is no maximum. And maybe to explain it further, you mm. can have instances where uh, people are having different um, you know, products. One might be having a preservation fund. One might be having a retirement annuity. So for each and every single one of these products, you would have up to 30% or 10% of whatever that was sitting in your in your retirement being transferred into a savings pot mm. as long as it does not go to a maximum of um, more than 30,000. It has to be 30,000. So I might sit and I have four of them and in each and every single one of them because I'm already having um, more than 30,000, I will sit with 30,000 in each pot. Or in certain instances, maybe I sit with 62,000, which means that in my savings pot for a different product, I'll sit with 6,200. But what is important to remember is it cannot be more than 30,000 in that savings pot, irrespective of how big or how large your retirement annuity or I got pension is. So now the question is, um, which is the taxed portion? Do they now take from the 30 or you're taxed above the 30? So you are going to be taxed at what you withdraw, the amount you withdraw, bearing in mind that we're saying there is no maximum that you can withdraw. However, we are saying in your savings pot, you might be sitting with up to 30,000, depending on what was in your retirement pot. So essentially, let's use 30,000 as an example. If I'm mm -hmm. sitting with 30,000 and I want to go and withdraw the full 30,000, what will happen is that uh, the organization, you know, your, your fund administrator, will actually put together a tax directive that will be sent to SARS and then SARS will confirm at which rate you need to be taxed. And this is in relation to your marginal tax. And based on that, then you will be taxed. So if I'm being taxed at 45%, that essentially means that of the 30,000, I'm probably going to get about 16,500. We've got to remember out of that, there are still fees that you have to pay, which are your administrative mm. cost. And that's an average of 300 at this point in time. That's the number that's being thrown around. So essentially, for anyone who is at a 45% uh, tax rate, who is going to take 30,000, they must then expect that um, 16,500 minus administrative um, uh, cost would be the amount that will actually hit their bank account. Mm, mm. Oh, all right. This is a, a little bit confusing and now i can understand why um so many are so confused about this two-part system but what we're going to do we've got a, a question coming through on double one double eight three oh seven oh two mushera in pretoria go ahead yes look one problem because i do propose this they wanted to relieve most of the workers who are struggling of course the, the question will be was it going to be amount of text that SARS will take if you go you, you, you don't take from the two-port system when you go on pension if that is not the case why is the government punishing the people that they're trying to assist to 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 relieve pressure on on on, on, on the workers and also the, the question that i i just want i've had a number of experts it seems as if SARS will only go after you if you go for two-port system of which is not true Whatever that you owe us, whether you go into the two-port system, you're still going to pay that. It's not that because you're going to, you're claiming from two-port system, then SARS will be after. SARS is going to go after you, whether you detect him from two-port system or not. Please, that, let that be clear, please. Um, uh, what are your thoughts there, Hualani? And I think he's um, absolutely right. We've got to remember that with any income that you earn, there is an expectation that you will pay tax on it. And we also have to remember that whether you are digging into your savings pot now, even later in life when you go and retire, you will actually still pay um, tax. Um, you know, we know that when you retire, there's uh, up to 550000 which is tax-free which is dependent on whether you have draw, withdrawn before or not. So there will be tax implication uh, today uh, from a savings pot, but also later in life when you retire. The only difference, though, that we have to note is that your tax at retirement will probably be much more less than what it is now at your marginal tax rate, whereas later on your retirement um, tax will be different. It will be lesser than what you would actually spend now. And, and does it change uh, depending on your age? Look, it, it, it changes because I think after 55 years of age, um, you will obviously 
I've got for some people they've got an option to retire. Some people will continue working. So as, for as long as you're earning an income and working, therefore you will still continue to pay tax, uh, like employee tax. But later on, as you retire, there will obviously be certain rebates that you ex- you can experience depending on on certain age. So 65 years and above, you would have rebates for certain things that you earn uh, in terms of income. So uh, it will depend on you know when you retire because some people you know they're very lucky they say well at 55 i'm retiring some retire at 65 so those are some of the things that you can think of yes so for me it was more around the age of withdrawal so let's say you withdraw at the age of 40 does it make a difference uh, whether you withdraw at 40 or 50 in terms of the tax it doesn't matter, but I think I need okay. to point out the fact that um, anyone who's aged 55 and above, um, you know, when there was conversation and they were starting to talk about the two parts, one of the things that they made very clear was to say that for people who are 55 years and older, they will, that they will actually give them an option to opt in or opt out. Uh, obviously, because uh, with most retirement funds, you will have access from the age of 55. But whether you're 45 or 50, it doesn't matter. The tax element will depend on, you know, what your marginal tax rate is at that point in time. 23 minutes to 3 o'clock. And now we've got tickets to give away. We've got tickets to give away. And uh, we, we still are going to be giving away some money with ABSA Home Loans, uh, the old mutual concert that we have been chatting about. So stay tuned to your phones. You might be a winner. Make sure you are standing by and ready for it. 702 Masterclass. We continue with our masterclass with APSA Home Loans. We're talking understanding the two-part pension fund system. Now we're going to ask you a question, and this is how you're going to get to win a 5,000 rand in cash courtesy of APSA Home Loans. The question is simple, and you had to have been listening to be able um, to answer this question, or you already know. And the question, and I hope that uh, Hualani Mabaso, Managing Executive of Everyday Advice and Distribution at ABSA, is keeping my wording in check for this question that we're going to give. The question is, uh, what is the maximum... Or what is the cap for your savings pot? I want the amount that is the cap for your savings pot. 072-702-1702. Send a WhatsApp, please. The lines are going crazy. We're not taking it as a call. Send a WhatsApp, please. Fastest fingers first. What is the cap for your savings pot that you're allowed to have? It's going to be the first one who answered correctly and you get to win 5,000 Rand courtesy of ABSA home loans. Now we continue with the conversation uh, Hualani and there's so many questions that are coming through so I'm going to just start going through the different questions. One says uh, on the two-part plan with the savings pot if you don't make any withdrawals will it still earn interest at the same rate as the other retirement pot? Yeah no um, that's a very good question actually it is the case Um, so if you keep it there you will still continue uh, you will continue earning um, interest going forward uh, which is a great thing because at the end of the day, later in life, you will still have um, access to that savings pot as a lump sum when you retire. So for those who are really looking at that savings pot and going, you know, I don't want to touch it. It's a good thing. It will still stay and you will still continue to end. Please, can I ask everybody that is calling for the competition not to be calling? We want to take listeners' questions with ABSA Home Loans around the two-part system. Your answers need to go to 072-702-1702 so that we can give an opportunity to those that have questions. Another question says, say I have used up my savings that I have accessed during the time of hardship and the time of hardship ends. Say I get a job. What happens to the savings component? Will it accumulate again or is it used up? Hmm? If it's used up, is that it? Is what they're asking. No, it isn't. I think um, we have to remember that, yes, we're saying you've got, we call it sit capital. So the, the 30,000 that you're currently sitting at, that has been kept. It's basically to activate uh, for each and every single member to have a savings pot. But going forward, for any contribution that you will be making from the 1st of September 2024, 
one third of those contribution, obviously net of cost, will now go into the savings pot, which means that you're building up, and then the two third will then go to your retirement um, pot. But we have to remember that if you're a little bit older, it means that your your savings pot capital, the growth will not be as quickly as you know it was before because you've got less years um, to save for the retirement. But it means that you can continue having an amount coming in into that savings mm. pot. Just in, in in terms of if you do nothing, there's no benefits in inverted commas to doing nothing and not withdrawing. Things just continue as per normal. There is a benefit, a big one. And, and I suppose the benefit is not maybe something that we can see now. But if I really just look at the current challenges that we've got as a country, um, you know, uh, the, the National Treasury tells us that about 6%, 6%, of South Africans can actually retire comfortably. So the benefit for those who do not withdraw from the savings pot is that later in life, when you retire, you will be having at least sufficient money for you to still maintain a certain lifestyle for yourself. Whereas if you go now and you continuously take money out of so your savings um, you know, pot, you're actually robbing yourself in future in terms of your retirement money. So the benefits, I think, in my view, are huge uh, because then later on you can be comfortable as opposed to a situation which is what we see with a lot of South Africans who are not able to retire comfortably. Okay, oh, the questions that are coming in. This is from Bambata on X, who asks, if I were to make a withdrawal in September 2025, would I be in a position to withdraw 60K before tax and admin? <laughs> uh, goodness me. I think it all depends on what is sitting in, in your savings port. So I did mm. mention earlier that you do not have um, a maximum. So essentially, uh, if you have saved enough and you're sitting with pots that can accumulate in different pots, because remember, for each product, you've got up to 30,000. So essentially... Uh, it will mean that you're sitting with different uh, pots all over. So you would have maybe one in a preservation fund. Maybe you would have another one in your retirement. Maybe you would also have another one in your current job pension fund. So all of those accumulated together, if they lead to the 60,000, essentially that means you will be in a position to withdraw to that. But again, it also means that you are going to pay uh, a bigger amount also from a tax perspective and take away the opportunity for a comfort um, retirement later in life. We've got a question coming through from Mulefe in President Park. Mulefe, go ahead. Yes, um, I was entrenched, okay? And I cashed out my pension. And uh, I had, on the side, I, I was taxed on my pension. And on the side, I had to determine the annuity. Now, if I want to, and I'm, I'm currently unemployed, if I want to tap into my retirement annuity on the two port, am I going to be taxed on that nominal tax or what's going to happen? All right. I think um, because you, 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 you were retrenched, I think what you're talking about is probably a preservation fund, um, not necessarily a retirement fund. But if you were contributing, and two things that I think I would need to maybe answer this through, if you were contributing to a retirement annuity and you still continue to contribute to this day, it means obviously you will have a certain portion that is sitting in that savings pot. Even if you are not contributing, you will have a certain portion that is sitting in that savings pot that you can access. For a pres preservation fund, if you have preserved some money, you will also be sitting with a certain amount also in the savings pot. And what's important there to note is the fact that even though you were you were taxed before, you will still be taxed again because you're dipping into uh, your savings pot and this is actually looked at as an income that you will be getting. Thank you so much, uh, Mulefe, in President Park for that question. And your questions keep uh, continuing to come through on 072, 702 and 702. Anonymous is asking just a question to your guest. What happens when you resign? Do you still have the option to get all your money like before? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a very good question. Uh, so for, for, for resignation at this point in time, uh, anything that was sitting in your versed pot, which is the old pot, um, uh, you know, you will actually be able to access that. There will be withdrawal, but uh, you will be tax based on, on your, your current tax, obviously, tax rate. 
But um, going forward, we have to remember that your retirement pot, where now the new contributions are going to come through, you cannot withdraw from this pot. Uh, the pension that you will receive will actually be later when you retire. Um, so for anyone who, who wants to, to resign from, uh, I think, their employment right now, it's very important to note that you can only access going forward what will be sitting in your savings pot. Um, and anything else that is not in your savings pot, you will not have access to. So does that mean that the person needs to transfer it to the new employment or what does that mean? So um, essentially you've got options uh, for preservation and I think that's the one thing that we're trying to, to solution for, to say to all the employees, instead of you having to go and take all your money, um, you're going to preserve the two thirds. So it's sort of a, a way to actually encourage more preservations than actually consumption of the money. But with that said, you will still have access to what is sitting in your savings pot, which you then can withdraw and, and do whatever it is that you want to do with it. Um, but you can't touch what will be sitting in your retirement pot. Thank you so much for those questions. We're going to take a break when we come back more on the two-pot pension fund system. And it is 11 minutes to 3 o'clock. And on this uh, masterclass with EPSA Home Loans, we're talking understanding the two-pot pension fund system and its implications for homeowners with Hualani Mabaso, Managing Executive of Everyday Advice and Distribution at EPSA. And uh, we, we have the money we want to be giving away that will be coming up shortly. We take your calls on 011-883-0702, the WhatsApp line 072-702-1702. Uh, we've got your voice notes coming in with your questions. Hi, Riley. Uh, I just have a question here that was posed by one of my colleagues. Um, what if someone is not a South African and has been contributing towards the... Um, the retirement and now you cease to be a south african resident you want to go back home does it mean the person must withdraw and then let's say later on then the person decides that okay i'm coming back to south africa how is that going to be handled thank you bye oh that's an interesting one Hualani, maybe let me know um i'm in that particular situation or if it sort of overlaps with your jurisdiction of expertise Look, I, I think I can, I can take it uh, to some extent. We've got to remember that, um, you know, current immigration rules will apply uh, to pension fund savings, whether prior or post um, two pot. So the current rules indicate that individuals who are part of a retirement fund will be eligible to receive lump sum benefits only when they um, meet the requirements um, of um, ceasing to be a South African. And I'm referring here to the context that she's given if somebody has left the country. Uh, so essentially, um, there are rules that are there that actually speaks to how you need to deal with tax as a non-resident um, and, and also making sure that you've got non-residency status. But if that person comes back, obviously, and there's employment, uh, I think, again, we've got to remember that um, as any, a person who's employed in South Africa, you just need to make sure that you meet all the rules from a home, home affairs perspective. Um, so there will be access, but I think when you're outside, you're not a South African, the immigration rules or will apply um, to that. Mm. Or even if you're All a right. South African and you decide to leave the country, there will be immigration yes. rules that will apply. All right, more of your voice notes. Just a question from me. So if I have like retirement annuity and then I also have a pension fund at work, Will I be allowed to withdraw both on my retirement annuity and at work? Mm. All right. Um, so, so in terms of this one, um, you will be allowed um, to actually withdraw. But I think we have to remind the listeners that you've got one withdrawal per year. So this is not I withdraw today, I withdraw tomorrow. I feel like I withdraw. I would want to withdraw. You've got one withdrawal that you can exercise within a, a tax year. Um, so for everybody who's out there, even if you might be sitting, whether it's in your pension fund or your retirement annuity, you just have to bear in mind that you only have one withdrawal within a tax year. That's also uh, meant to cap, uh, you know, uh, withdrawals all the time. 
but also to just allow people to really do it when it's, uh, it's required and necessary. There's something you mentioned earlier on, which is about the fact that, you know, you can't use the money to go to Mauritius, for example. Um, after you withdraw, who is monitoring what you use the money for? And if it turns out you did not use it for, you know, what, what would be considered as financial emergency, what are the, the implications of that? I think there are no implications because uh, there's no watchdog, uh, really, that's going to say for all the South Africans who have withdrawn, we're going to check and see, you know, what you're using the money for. Uh, I think consciously, as an individual, you've got to be comfortable with the decision. And, and if that decision is not one that you're very clear of, um, I suggest that you, you really take time and speak to a financial advisor to help you journey and look at other options that you might have. Uh, but we will not have um, anyone uh, watching over you, except that later in life, uh, when you do not have enough, you, you've got to sort of look at yourself uh, to say, well, I took uh, some money uh, a couple of years back, so it's just an impact later in life, not necessarily at this point in time. Mm, mm. All right. Um, let us uh, look at some more of the messages coming through in the WhatsApp line. Uh, one says, I was fired from work last month towards month end. The employer is still in the process of finalizing. Um, um, so if the question in essence is saying, if I didn't put through before the 1st of September, does it mean I can't get my withdrawal to move to another company, whatever the case may be? I think in terms of um, firing and maybe rules and legislations and law around that, I don't necessarily understand uh, the listener circumstances, but it will be different because in some cases, you may actually find that uh, employers decide to sort of hold back money depending on what the circumstances would be. Mm. But I suppose if it is one way it is, you know, a, a, an element of one being fired and still having their pension intact, essentially that will mean that this person will then be able to, to access whatever that has been put in their savings pot. But you do have, I think, just from experience, uh, uh, you know, situations where people are fired from their jobs and somehow mm. their pensions are held back, uh, depending on the circumstances. But if that's not the case, I would like to believe that um, the listener can actually have access to what is sitting in, in the savings pot. Thank you so much, Hualani, for your time. And now we have somebody who we asked a simple question to. What is the cap that you can withdraw? Mudise, what is the cap? 30,000 rand, really, over here. Congratulations! 5,000 rand coming your way. You. Stay tuned to chat to our producer. And thank you so much uh, for tuning to the 702 Masterclass with me, Rile Bukhile Maboja, brought to you by Absa Home Loans. Come back every first and last Wednesday of the month for more conversations with property industry experts guiding you on the next chapter of your home ownership story, whether you find yourself on the journey. Uh, wherever rather you find yourself on the journey, go to the 702 Facebook and X pages for a chance to be the next winner. And of course, listen in every first and last Wednesday of the month. Absa Home Loans is committed to housing the nation, one home ownership story at a time. Your story matters. Absa, T's and C's apply. Absa is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider, NCRCP7. Mm-hmm.